You know, additive manufacturing's transition from a, a prototyping technology to a true manufacturing production technology. I'm with Donovan Weber, he's COO of Forecast 3D. Now Donovan, I understand that MJF, this is a, a relatively new technology yes, in, as a manufacturing process. Uh, now I know that Forecast 3D, you, you introduced this as a new capability, tell me about it. Well, we're actually one of the founding partners with HP. So this is a technology that was announced about three years ago, and just within the last month here, uh, as a part of the Founders Club, we've gotten our first two pieces of equipment in place. Um, they've been running for almost four weeks now. We were building production parts inside of four or five days in, in, in the first week they got set up. So these guys are setting up a, a number of places around the country that they're, they're going to showcase the technology. Uh, we're in Carlsbad, California, and so we've, we've got a, kind of a center of excellence set up for additive manufacturing in general. And the ability for a customer, a potential customer who wants to buy equipment or customers who want to buy parts from us to, to test the equipment or, or uh, get into a short series production or, or you know kind of a medium series production, we're able to provide that at our facility. So you go both ways, you could do a short run and then also integrate a, a new system for a manufacturing company? Right, yes, we can. Um, the idea with this technology is you're getting into a modular production capability. They've increased the speed on this equipment uh, and reduced the cost pretty dramatically. So between speed and cost, we're able to look at, at sh short series runs that get into the hundreds, thousands, and with the right parts, into the tens of thousands. And what sort of materials can you work with? So out of the gate, they've got uh, a, a family of nylon 12s, right? There, there is the, the nylon 12 that HPS started with, and there is an early entrant. So it's an open platform. It's not just HP developing materials, but they actually have material development kits that are going out to different materials companies. And so the, the first wave, as I understand it, will all be nylon 12 based materials, uh, but more things are coming, right? Different uh, color will be introduced. Uh, not too far down the road, there is an elastomer on its way. Uh, but for now, what you're getting is a Henry Ford black. We, we, it actually comes off the machine in a gray and we can dye it black. Do you anticipate uh, MGF as a possible technology for making tooling? Uh, you know, I, I'm sure those conversations are being had, but really the the intent at this point is to uh, is, is to go ahead and produce end use parts. The longest build you're going to get off of this machine is 12 hours. You fill this machine and it's a 12 hour long build. That build then needs to, to cool for 12 hours, so you've got production parts within 24 hours. So it sounds like your 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 cost optimizing strategy basically is to fill that build plate and to, exactly. to maximize that surface area. That is exactly it. Now they're running on a platform of, of low cost materials as well. So the material that you're not using is fully recyclable as well. So you're putting in a maximum of a 80% recyclability to a 20% version. It's a, a material stream that can that can be refreshed. So, but being that the material is low cost, some of the other technologies, one of the big things about additive is material cost, right? Uh, this is part of the game changer, the speed and the cost of materials. Now, yeah, as you move into engineering resins, uh, more advanced resins beyond polyamides, in this case, you're talking about a flame retardancy, yes. automatically I'm thinking aerospace, specifically exactly. interior components down there. Uh, a big future market? Absolutely, right, those, uh, I'm sure those, those companies are playing with it in their Skunk Works labs now, right? Uh, that's one of the homes that SLS has, has found some real success in is, is Aero, right? We know that Airbus and Boeing are both, uh, have a number of part numbers that are in-flight capable in the centered nylon from SLS technology. So uh, it's early, right? These machines are really just hitting the field, but we do expect that to be quite an opportunity. MJF technology is the future of engineering resins and sophisticated part production, says Donovan Weber.